our next guest practically grew up before our eyes. On the hit TV drama Castle, the talented Miss Quinn went from daddy's little girl to college student to a super smart private eye. She has also starred in films such as We Are the Millers, but most recently the actress added producer to her title. Please welcome Molly C. Quinn to the show! Do you see all the fanfare and hear all the fanfare for you? Because it's so well deserved, Molly. Okay, so you have big things going on. And I need to take notes from you. You were laughing at me earlier, but this is no joke, Molly. You've produced before, because, you know, what don't you do? But you started a production company a couple of years ago with your friends. It's called Quagmire, correct? Yes, uh, it's spelled with the first three initials of our last name, mm -hmm. so Q-W-G. And then Meyer, basically, it was a, a dumb joke that just stuck. And so we pronounce it Quagmire because we're a problem. Um, oh, please, I, if that's a problem, I want your problem, Molly. Seriously, because <laughs> I said you're doing big things. And by big things, I mean Agnes, your film that your company produced, got the honor of premiering at the Tribeca Festival. I, I can't even, that is why I want your problem, Molly. I don't have a film pre uh, premiering at Tribeca. And to be a, some, something so magnificent and so big and such a big deal, how does it feel? So I can prepare for after you train me to be like you. Oh uh, my God, it's, it's incredible. It's better than Christmas and the 4th of July and Valentine's Day, like every amazing thing wrapped into one. Uh, and it's so validating, you know, to have started this company and to have done a film that we all really believed in. It, it's our first one. Uh, it's just, we're humbled and just, just, just feeling real, real good. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I, we're gonna take a look. I'm glad that you feel good because I know I've seen the clips. I don't know if I'm gonna be, I'm gonna survive it, but we have a clip. We'll take a look and then if I survive it, we'll discuss. I can't wear this. I'm not a priest. This is gonna cause problems in there. We should look at this as a test of faith for all of us. We're afraid the added pressure is making him uh, erratic. Treat someone like an animal, they will act like an animal. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before in my life. I thought you were supposed to be the expert. I keep asking for God to guide me, and I hear nothing back. You have to bury the dead, Harry. Uh, oh. I survived it! <laughs> I was speaking Yay. through. But by the way, our anchor Betty was like, Molly, you in danger, girl. Is, Mo <laughs> is your character Mary in danger? Am I in danger of watching this? Will my heart be okay? Because some reviews are saying that this is not your typical exorcism movie. So, yes, uh, those are great questions. Uh, Mary is absolutely in danger. You know, she <laughs> runs away to the convent to be by herself and to kind of um, meditate on the loss of her son. So she's really there not to worship God, but to be in a place where she can be in quiet and think about these memories she had of her son that she lost. And when this demon gets into the convent through Sister Agnes, and Mary is confronted with that, she Oof. again just can't, she can't deal with it. So she, she leaves, she leaves the convent. And in the second half of the film, we really leave that behind and it turns into this character study of loss of faith and grief and how those things, you know, can be their own real world demons, uh, whether you see it that way or an actual demonic possession. So either way, there is, there are demons in the real world. Mm. Oh, sorry, they were showing the <laughs> clip. Sorry, they were showing the clip where you were talking, so I was trying to protect myself. I'm sorry, Molly, what? That's, this is how I roll when I watch scary movies. So Molly, I love that. You were, Cause okay, so this is you playing double duty on this project. You're producing it, you're acting in it. So is it is it different for you, like as an actress to know, are you paying different, uh, like a closer attention to other things or do you wait till after you out of character, because I haven't done these things, Molly. I told you I need to take notes. Uh, where's my pen? So tell me what it's like. Are you, is it more stress? Is it just smooth sailing? Is it what? And so what can I expect when I start acting and producing? Go. Uh, what you can expect is that the role of a producer is problem solving. Uh, there are problems constantly. You're racing against the clock. You are, uh, you know, you are keeping your eye on the budget. And mm. then as an actor, you're basically just wearing two hats, so you're never able to turn off. There's never a break. Uh, and I oddly really enjoyed that. 
uh, it's fun to, you know, when you're an actor, you create a piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. and you take care of it. And it's this wonderful thing. And then as a producer, you kind of have this bird's eye view of the entire world mm -hmm. and you get to shepherd that vision to the screen, you know, to the best of your ability. Uh, and I absolutely loved that. Yeah. And I think you will too. Okay, Molly, uh, we're in a bit of a quagmire here because one thing, I can't act. And number two, you said producers are problem solvers. I am a troublemaker. I create the problems. So I don't know how this is going to work for me, but under your guidance, I will be good. Because we have watched you on Castle, and I know you're a pro. And speaking of Castle, you reunited with your TV dad for an episode of the show, The Rookie. Reunited, and it feels, how did it feel? Oh, amazing. Oh, she's dancing to me singing. Oh. <laughs> Don't encourage it me. It was amazing. I am. Um, my hair was still uh, dark brown mm -hmm. when I did the episode, and so because it was, you know, uh, dealing with COVID precautions, I was wearing a face shield and a mask, and my hair was dark. So I went up to Nathan to say hi, and he stuck his hand out and was like, "Hi, I'm Nathan Fillion." Oh. And I was like, Nathan. It's me, it's Molly. <laughs> I took everything off. He was shocked. And that was honestly really fun, you know, because imagine, and I know it was because of the mask and the mm -hmm. shield and everything, but like being able to surprise someone, you know, that has known me since I was 14 years old, yeah. you don't get to do that. That yeah. was pretty amazing. And it also shows what a nice person he is that he didn't even know who you were. He's like, hi, I'm Nate. Because, you know, some people would be like, uh, hello, lady. Make way, maybe me, someone like, maybe that's why I'm not a star. Cause I'd be like, uh, excuse you, do you know who I am? Kind of thing. Let but... me tell you, Nathan is the nicest guy in Hollywood. Oh, we can tell. And you are the nicest lady in Hollywood and the best teacher, Molly. Thank you for teaching me and for guiding me. You have a lot of work cut out for you, just so you know. But Molly Sequin, thank you so much for sharing your film, Agnes, with us. Everyone, you can watch her film through Tribeca Film Festival at home. It's available now through June 23rd. Uh, get your rosary beads, whatever it is you believe in, because you might need it. It's going to scare you from what you just saw. I barely saw, I barely watched it because my heart's beating really fast. Molly, I love you. <laughs> I took notes. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Come back for your more and more movies that you're going to produce. I will. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day.